This is the best little French pizza. Oh. I need some cognac. Can I get some cognac? Is it good? It's very good. It's the best cognac. How much is it? How much is 300 euro? Three, for a glass? Yes. That's like 400 bucks. I don't know cognac yet, so I figured before I try the expensive stuff, I should probably know what I'm drinking. Okay, so. How much is that? It's 12 euros a glass. But it's good, right? Yes, it's very good. And it's full bodied cognac. Full bodied? I like my cognac to be full bodied. I have no idea what I'm doing. Every night, in every city around the world, it happens. People pour into local watering holes to, well, drink. It's my mission, that's me, to traverse the globe getting to know these different people and their drinking customs. Bellying up to the bar, and with any luck, making some new friends. Warning, if you're gonna learn how to appreciate cognac, you should first learn how to spit. Was that good or bad? You'll see more of that later, but first. <laughs> cognac, not just a drink, but also a region in France. Sound familiar? Remember last time I was in France? Champagne, Champagne. It's, not it's not just, just a drink. drink. It's, it's also, also a region in the northeast of France. <laughs> If you remember that, then you also remember this claim. You can't get a hangover from champagne? No. <laughs> well, despite the claims, I got myself a mean hangover in champagne. And here in cognac, there's no denying that enough cognac will give me another one. But not if I do things the way they're done here, where the emphasis is on self-control and the appreciation of flavor and artisanship. Rare concepts for this show. Yes, here in Cognac, it's a different atmosphere where my willpower will be tested. I'll be asked to subdue my urges, focus on the subtle flavor elements, in an effort to refine my unrefined palate. If I succeed, I am told I'll be welcomed into the upper echelons of local Cognac society. Can I do it? Find out when I try not to go. Three sheets to Cognac. Before getting all refined and hoity-toity, I could stand to let off a little steam in the form of some good old-fashioned hard labor. Maybe something involving hammering, fire, ooh, and running. So I begin my journey at the Toronto Tonellery Cooperage, where they make barrels. It's a modern-day operation but they integrate modern technology with the long-standing craftsmanship of the so-called Coopers, or the barrel makers. And yes, if your last name is Cooper, you probably have an ancestor who did this for a living. For cognac to be considered cognac, it must be aged in French oak barrels, which is what they make here. The Coopers use select cuts of French oak that have been carefully tapered to achieve the bulbous shape of the traditional cognac barrel. They use steel rings to form and bind them. This one? Yes. And they do so over an open flame. The use of flame, along with periodic hits of water, helps to make the wood pliable. Once the bulge-like form is created, they cook it a little more. Oh! Man, that was hot! Woo! The flame also chars the inside of the barrel which adds to the flavor of the booze during the aging process. <laughs> Coopers monitor further charring until the inside of the barrel is cooked to perfection. The barrels are eventually capped, sanded, and ready to impart fine French oak flavor to the wines, cognacs, and other drinks they'll soon contain. And while that's all really cool and stuff, probably the coolest part of making barrels is the racing. After watching the professionals and watching my uh, not so professional crew, I think I'm ready to make a go at barrel rolling greatness. 
I'm fast. <laughs> Me too. Oh, <laughs> oh you think you would go out here and roll barrels like it's fun? No. You, you, you need to work it for something like this. I just born a barrel roller or a bar barrel picker rubber, you know? How on earth did you pull it off? How did you do it? Dedication, you know? Concentrated. I knew, you know, what I had to do. It's years of practice and everything like that, you know? It was, it was just good. I want to thank God. They'd never seen that kind of stuff here before. They roll them. I pick it up. Hand pound. I've had a great day pounding and rolling out the barrels, but I still don't know much about the stuff that goes inside these things. So my new friends at the Cooperage drag me to the grounds of the renowned Hennessy Distillery. <laughs> Hennessy Cognac was established in the late 1700s by Richard Hennessy, an Irish mercenary placed in Cognac by the King of France. Renowned throughout the ages, as a drink for distinguished gentlemen of yore, distinguished rappers of today, and now the distinguished host of this show. Because Renaud, who's a blender here, wants me to sniff, sip, and spit my way through a booze-tasting experience. Spitting is really something you need to feel from the inside. Wow. It's not something you just get like that. He says if I prove a worthy student, he'll give me a chance to create my very own original cognac blend. Your cognac. My cognac. Your cognac. Moose knuckle cognac, I will call it. Moose Whatever. Knuckle. Okay. That's right. We're on the verge of a three sheets original. Moose knuckle cognac, I will call it. But first, Renaud emphasizes the fact that none of the samples in front of us qualify as cognac. They are various forms of so-called eau de vie. And it translates into water of life. These are the building blocks of cognac. So what is eau de vie? Eau de vie is made from locally harvested Trebbiano grapes, which are pressed and fermented into wine. It's not a table wine. It's really wine that is made for distillation. OK. The technical term for what happens to the wine from there is called elaboration. During this multi-phase process, the wine first gets distilled into a sort of cloudy spirit of around 50 to 60 proof. That product is then further refined through a second distillation. First, they capture the heads the initial booze too high in alcohol content. Then they capture the hearts. That's the good stuff in the middle with just the right amount of alcohol. And finally, the tails come out, which is too watery with not enough booze. This process of separation is known as cutting. The remaining heads and tails are saved to be redistilled later, and the heart is kept as the new eau de vie. And it's pretty potent stuff. This is 70%. Exactly. That's 140 proof. Yes. Wow. OK, so. Coming up, will this heart make my heart skip a beat? My nose is drunk right now. <laughs> and later, a cognac drinking stare down. Yeah. Right now, I'm at the Hennessy Cognac Estate, where I'm about to taste a precursor to cognac called Eau de Vie. Grape wine has been double distilled and not aged. That's 140 proof. Yes. Wow. OK. OK, so. Goosebumps. <laughs> Renaud says that to better detect the flavor nuances of a drink this strong, it's actually better if I don't drink it. I can actually taste it better now after I spit it out. Yes, always. What's important is the final impression you get, especially with a brand new eau de vie like that. Mm -hmm. It's really, really the final taste you have on your tongue, on your mouth, on okay. your nose. That's what's important when we are judging them. Wow. Now Renaud wants me to try the dark stuff. Now we have three samples of eau de vie from the Hennessy stuff. We okay. just took three samples from three barrels. Okay. Again, these are not cognacs. These are eau de vie from different years. 
which Renaud is gonna have me taste and blend into my very own cognac. I feel like I'm supposed to like this one the most. No, it's, it's, it's really, this is one of the components. The purpose of blending is that one plus one can be more than two. Ah, uh, got it. So now you have to put your hand on top of it. Yeah? And check it three times. It's very important to have three times. Okay. One, two, three sheets, three, three shakes. Now you get a nice aftershave. And your hand. Ow. I smell like Grandpa Joe. With some more sampling and tweaking, I finally come up with a perfect moose knuckle blend. Again, perfect. Two parts 1983, one part 1990, two parts 1996. <sighs> and though he didn't put moose knuckle on the label, I appreciate the rare chance to make my very own blend. This is awesome. You can't have it. <laughs> okay. At this point, you might be saying to yourself, self, this cognac stuff sounds like little more than hard alcohol that's made from grapes. And that means it's brandy. And you know what? Tell yourself, you're right. Hmm, I think the professor has a little explaining to do here. Professor Ace. The mad scientist. All cognac is brandy, but not all brandy is cognac. Some of the things that distinguish cognac from other forms of brandy are the regional grapes, the elaboration process of double distillation and cutting, the aging in French oak barrels, and the blending of various eau de vie. Just like sparkling wines cannot claim the coveted title of champagne unless they are made in champagne according to strict standards, brandies cannot be called cognac unless they are from the designated region and made according to standards set forth by the Cognac Consortium and the French government. Now, enjoy your moose knuckles, Zane. <laughs> That's awesome. That is, that is, that is. Yeah, that's, that's the one yet. Oh my God, that is so cool. I, you know what, people do write me every day, tell me how lucky I am, I have the best job in the world. And it's just stuff like this that touches me. I'm not gonna cry or anything, but. Maybe after one more glass of cognac, I would. <laughs> Thank you, Renaud. My experience as an understudy to Renaud has been rewarding, but I am still a mere apprentice, a boy among men. Renaud says I must meet with yet another mentor for the next phase of my cognac indoctrination. So I cross the exalted grounds of the Hennessy estate to seek further counsel through the guidance of an esteemed dignitary. Now, just, <laughs> just to clarify, you are an ambassador. Yeah, I'm an NFC ambassador. That's a pretty cool title. <laughs> Thomas, the ambassador, is going to show me how I can have two totally different drinking experiences in terms of taste with this one bottle, Hennessy XO. By the way, XO stands for extra old, meaning the youngest eau de vie in the blend is at least six years old. There's also a VSOP, very superior old pale, which is at least four years old. And at the bottom of the scale is VS, or very special, which is at least two years old. But before we drink our XO, Thomas wants me to experience some diverse aromas. Things like prunes, cinnamon, tobacco, and orange peel. It smells like an orange. Yeah, actually, you gotta oh. go beyond that. I have to go beyond an orange? <laughs> yeah, uh, what do you feel about it? It smells like Florida. These different smells are supposed to serve as a frame of reference for tasting. First, we drink it neat. Cool. Straight up, room temp, no rocks, no mixer. What do we say? Santé. Santé? Oh, it's nice. I have a little bit of orange. Yeah, definitely. You have a freshness that's coming, and with time you see that the cognac opens up. Now it's time for our second cognac drinking experience. So now we're gonna see the same product, but we're gonna put it on the rocks. That's the most common today. Before we drink, it's time for Thomas's number one rule on cognac drinking etiquette. In southwest of France, uh, we look each other in the eyes because if you choose just a glass like that, yeah. looking at the, it's not serious. You gotta oh. look the eyes. I'm serious. If, I can shoot laser beams out of my eyes. Oh, you can? Yeah, watch. So go ahead. Something. 
Yeah. <laughs> Be very careful. Now that I've dazzled Thomas with the power of a Hennessy-induced glare, I think it's time to size up this drink. That's nice. So on the rocks, it brings down the alcohol sensation. Okay. It's much easier to drink it. It's yeah. fresh, so it's nice when it's warm outside. So it, okay. it definitely tastes different. I, it's it's like when you have sake that's cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, you, you change the taste of it. Yeah, you change. Usually you get fresher type of flavors, so mm -hmm. you get more the fruitiness of it. Okay, neat and on the rocks. Wow, that's good Hennessy. But Thomas ain't done with me yet. So he takes me out to the veranda for some cocktailing. Are you good at mixing? Uh, I'm learning. <laughs> My not so confident bartender is using Hennessy VS, the young stuff, considered okay for mixing. And the mix is two parts cognac, one part pureed strawberries, although Thomas says that any fresh seasonal fruit will do, a little fresh mint, ice, give it a shake, strain, garnish with mint, and we're ready to drink. Are we gonna kill it or what? You didn't learn, I gotta do it again. <laughs> Whoops, forgot that whole eye contact thing. <laughs> that is a gentleman's drink. Yes, it is a gentleman drink. Not too sweet, but apparently it wasn't supposed to be a gentleman drink. Oh, I forgot something. <laughs> Thomas, what'd you forget? You, you forgot to put sugar in it? Yeah. What, what, what are we gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, Thomas has the perfect okay. solution. I make it drier. Men's, it's drier. Oh, it's a man's drink. And if you want for a uh, lady, then you put the sugar Yeah, you put the sugar in. Yeah. I don't need sugar. <laughs> I'm a guy. This, see, you, you did notice how my pinky was firmly planted on the glass. If it had too much sugar in it, when you drink it, it would go like this. Yeah. That's not cool. <laughs> there you have it. Thomas's old accidental three sheets original. Two parts cognac, one part pureed strawberries with mint, shaken and poured over ice, henceforth known as Thomas the Ambassador's Gentleman Cognac Cocktail. Now that I know a thing or two about blending, tasting, and mixing, Thomas says I'm ready to go out into the world and experience cognac for myself. But without my mentors, can I really pull it off? Coming up, I put my training to the test at an illustrious and exclusive drinking club. So, right now, I'm in Cognac, France, where I've spent the better part of the day on the Hennessy estate learning the finer points of Cognac appreciation. I've since journeyed to the town of saint Servant, where I'm staying at Le Design Hotel de Franc Garçon. Out on the terrace bar, I found a couple of French dudes drinking cognac. My friend Steve McKenna calls it cognac. Cognac. I know, but he calls it cognac, and he's wrong, right? Yeah, absolutely. Not only do I know how to say cognac, I've blended it, I've sipped it. Wow. I've even hocked it into a spittoon. And now it's time to put my knowledge to the test. We're gonna play a quick little game here. Ooh. We're each gonna go and say one thing that we smell in this cognac, and the last person who can't come up with something is is would be the loser of this game. Vanilla. Grapes. Hold on a second. Grapes, that was kind of an easy one. <laughs> but okay. Grapes, grapes to you, Maurice. Grapes to you. It smell caramel. That's a pretty good one. All right. Oak. Work it. Le Che. What? Che? So it, Che is literally the house that the cognac comes from? Are you going to accept that as an answer? Sometimes the Che has a special fragrance, yeah, you know? Yeah. We find this uh, fragrance in the cognac. You're going to accept his answer? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I could say it smells like teen spirit, but I'd be wrong. Okay, so we're going to accept your answer. Uh -huh. Good one. Are you ready for, you ready for yours? It smells violets. Violets. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Violets is very. Do you yeah. accept his answer? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. L'orange. 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 Hmm. I'm not sure, man. Save me. I know. I don't think so. Whoa. What? <laughs> Maurice. No, 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 no. Orange is is wrong. 
Hold on a minute. Remember Thomas back at Hennessy? I have a little bit of orange. Yeah, definitely. You have a freshness that's coming, and with time you see that. You said it smells like a house in your wine, and I said it smells like oranges. Right. And you said house, and he gave that to you. We wouldn't give I don't orange. say house. <laughs> orange I'm, peel. I'm sorry for you. Orange peel. Yeah, I'm sorry. In the interest of avoiding an international incident, I'll accept this loss. But he who fights and runs away lives to fight another day. And tomorrow, the chance for victory awaits me at the much-anticipated gathering of the exclusive Cognac and Cigar Club. I need to be in tip-top shape, so I turn in early to avoid a hangover in hopes of achieving greatness. The next morning, I awake to the serenity of birds chirping and the sound of a gentle breeze caressing the nearby vineyards, and I realize I feel great. And I'm ready for the coming challenge. Earn a place of honor among the elite membership of the Cognac and Cigar Club. Here, everyone is drinking cognac and smoking fine Cuban cigars. Am I even allowed to touch this because I'm American? With my prized Cuban cigar in hand, I go in search oh. of cognac royalty, and I am not disappointed. This guy is a former cellar master for Remy Martin's famed Louis XIII. If I shake yeah. hands with you, people will be jealous. Yes. These are the hands that created Louis Trey. <laughs> yes, true cognac royalty. And he's not the only big shot cognac maker around here. Who makes the best cognac? Me. That's the right answer. And who has the coolest leather tie that I've ever seen? Since Huey Lewis. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go on a limb and say something. I'm gonna say that, that that tie is small, but the statement it makes is very, very large. This is Patrick and his wife Maria. They run Domaine Broy Sagonzac Cognac Distillery. Huh. I wonder if these two can put in a good word for me. You know what I wish? I wish that I wasn't just an attendant to this club, I wish I was a member. I wish I belonged to this brotherhood. Now, if you're a regular watcher of the show, you know that I've earned many honors as America's drinking ambassador to the world. Now the question is, can I earn this esteemed membership? I've spit, sniffed, and sipped. I never chugged, I drank with measured poise pressed flesh with the right people, and it's looking like all the hard work has paid off. We all signed this battle. Yes. And now, with this battle, you are a member of I am now a member of this club. Thank you. I, I will say that first, I do not deserve this honor, <laughs> but ever since I was a French boy living in Cuba, I've always wanted to be in a cigar and cognac club, and now the day has come. So I thank you, my brothers, my brother and sisters. Have a day! The party. Cheers! That's right, I'm in. I came here a blank slate, a mere sponge ready to absorb information. And uh, cognac, of course. And now I leave yeah, this charming you. villa a man among men. There we go, thank you. Cognac France. You'll have a barrel of fun. 